What's up everyone? I hope you guys are having a fantastic day so far. So today I'm going to be going over my top 10 list for new comic book day, April 28th, 2021. I picked up 17 issues this week. This is one of the biggest new comic book days I've had since making this channel. But were all the issues that good? Stick around and find out. Welcome back everyone, I am your host AR Comics and today I'm going to be going over my top 10 list for new comic book day, April 28th, 2021. But before I get started on this list, if you are new to the channel, I drop weekly comic book content that will keep you up to date on all the latest releases. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure you hit the subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And now without further ado, let's get started on this top 10 list. So I hope you all had a fantastic new comic book day this week and you enjoyed all the issues you picked up. As I was saying before, I picked up 17 total issues this week. One of them is an extra print, but you know, I picked it up. It's still part of the new comic book day haul and 17 issues is the most I've picked up in a very long time. So to get started on this list, I'm going to be going over the ones that didn't make the cut. They're in no particular order and honestly, I did enjoy them. They just, you know, it's a big week and just be careful. Sometimes spoilers do happen. I try to keep it as spoiler free as possible but you know I got excited talking about some of these books and it happens the first one I'm going to be going over is the extra print you already know I had to pick this one up we've got something is killing the children this is an eighth print I'm not going to be really talking about this series I talk about it all the time you all already know I love it a lot this next one we've got silk issue number two this is cover a and while I did like the issue there's just something about it right now that isn't connecting with me I think the artwork's very nice I'm going to be giving it I think one more issue I don't think this is a new ongoing for the character but the way the series is kind of set up right now it feels like it should be an ongoing so maybe i'm wrong but i don't know there's just something not connecting with me with this one so that one didn't make the cut moving on to the next one we've got dead end kids issue number four and this is the end of the series and frank ogle did such a great job wrapping this one up i really did enjoy it i highly suggest everyone to check out this series but 17 issues it just didn't happen this week Moving on to the final one that didn't make the cut, we've got Beta Ray Bill, issue number two. This is cover A, and this is one I was not anticipating on picking up because I really didn't enjoy how the last one ended. I thought the direction of the series itself, I was like, ah, I don't really know if this is going to be for me. They kind of did continue on with that, but they took a totally different pathway, and I'm still going to be picking up this series. If you were on the fence with it, Check it out. At least give it the second issue if you think that one's okay. Give it to the third. That's what I'm doing, and I'm going to give it the cutoff after that. But those are all the issues that didn't make the cut this week, so now let's move on to the top 10 list. All right, so to get started on the real top 10 list this week, we've got coming in at number 10, Erratic, issue number five of five. So for those of you reading this, this is the end of the series. And I think they did a pretty good job on it overall. I've said it before in some of the past videos, this isn't one of my favorite ones from AWA, but I love the artwork. I thought the characters were very well developed. I thought the story was going in the right direction, but I went into it with the mindset that there's no way they're going to be able to wrap this up within five issues. They spent the first two, maybe three issues building up and building up, and I thought it was a little slow but then once we progressed to issue four it kind of felt the same way and i went into this one thinking there's no way they're going to be able to end this properly so this is a little bit of a spoiler but they are going to be having a volume two and that kind of made me think of things a lot differently i went into it more like oh wow so he set all these characters up he set this story up gave them a backstory and man they kind of did the mom pretty dirty in this one they kind of i don't know she has no job she's slightly an alcoholic i, I kind of enjoyed that part of it. i thought it was funny but overall i did do still suggest reading this series. I've said it in the other videos too. I wouldn't go back and find the single issues, but if you can get the trade paperback for it, it's definitely worth it. So for those reasons, coming in at number 10. And next up on the list, we have coming in at number nine this week. This is Images Crossover, issue number six. This is cover A, and it is the end of the arc. So in my new comics this week video I make on Sunday, I talked about how the description said, do not miss the shocking conclusion to this one. I'm happy I didn't miss it. It did have a nice little shock value at the very end. I think Donny Cates overall did a good job wrapping it up, but... I feel like this issue should have happened in issue three or four, maybe even pushing five. I don't know. I felt like some of those middle issues were just so boring and it didn't really mean anything to me because I didn't know who some of those characters were. And then all of a sudden they made it to the bubble and then now all this stuff happened. We got some cool shock value at the very end. 
And I am going to pick up issue number seven, not because I'm really interested in what happens, but it said that Chip Zdarsky is going to be on issue seven. So I'm definitely going to be giving that one a shot. We'll see how that one goes. And then I'm going to go from there for the rest of the series. But for those reasons, I would suggest checking out this final issue. I thought, you know, it was pretty decent end to the arc, but for those reasons coming in at number nine. And now we have coming in at number eight this week. This one was a massive surprise. I did not anticipate on picking this one up, but we've got Source Point Press's Damned Cursed Children, issue number four. So I talked about I was only going to be grabbing this one if I was able to find the other three issues. So these are the covers to that one. This is issue number three, issue number two, and issue number one. Someone I was talking to in the comments section, they said, you know, it's a pretty good read, nothing too spectacular, but definitely worth it if you can find it. It was way better than I was thinking it was going to be. So there's not really a massive plot to this one, so I'm going to be talking about kind of all four issues together. To me, it kind of reminds me of a Children of the Corn mixed slightly with The Walking Dead. It really is just these possessed demon children that are attacking the adults and basically just destroying the world. So throughout these issues, we've just seen some different groups of people and how they're trying to survive. Very gory, very action-packed. It's in black and white, so if you're not really a black and white fan, it's not going to be your thing. But seriously, if you can find this one, definitely check it out. It's a very quick read. Like I was saying, not a whole lot of stuff happens, but it's a cool little story. So for those reasons, we've got Damn Cursed Children coming in at number eight. Next up on the list, we have coming in at number seven this week. This is Images Shadecraft, issue number two. This is cover A. And while I did really like the issue, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to have more action in it. Just the way the last issue kind of ended, I thought it was going to be a different way. But it was honestly kind of more of a comedy. So we have the main character. She's still with her brother, the Shadow. And she's just kind of catching him up on everything that he's missed while he's been in this coma. And they were just doing kind of, you know, brother-sister things throughout the whole time. She was catching him up on stuff, saying, you know, this is how mom and dad's been. This is what we've been up to while you've been in this coma. And it was just her at school kind of dealing with the same thing like the last issue. And like I said, I did really like it. It just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But as the issue progressed a little bit more and we made it to the very end, it kind of took another turn. So I am really looking forward to the third issue. I think if the third issue is kind of the same as one and two. I'm not going to be picking them up anymore, but let me know down low in the comment section what you thought about this issue. So we have Shadecraft issue number two coming in at number seven. And now we have coming in at number six this week. This is DC's Teen Titans Academy issue number two. This is cover A and I'm really enjoying this series so far. I've talked to a few people that said it's very okay and I'm liking it. I'm happy that it's its own unique series compared to Marvel's Strange Academy because I love that series and this is just so different. It's got obviously the same type of concept but the biggest difference to me is in Strange Academy they really focus on the new kids, their powers, developing them and just kind of giving them a backstory. And in this series these kids are just such a mystery so far and not just that but we've got this red x character that's now making an appearance and one of the kids is kind of linked to him and this whole other group of villains i want to know so much more about it all and i cannot wait for issue number three but for those reasons coming in at number six and now we're down to the top five issues of the week. We have coming in at number five this week. This is Marvel's Black Widow, issue number six. This is cover A, and Kelly Thompson is doing such a phenomenal job with this series. I didn't realize I could like a Black Widow series so much. She's doing this character so much justice, in my opinion. I'm loving all the issues. The artwork's incredible, too. And while this issue didn't have a whole lot of story, we did get a first appearance, and in my opinion, I do think that character is going to be sticking around for a little bit, but they gave her a little bit of an intro and then they just moved into action and it was just straight action for the rest of the issue and then it kind of brought the beginning back into it at the end and I'm really looking forward to the upcoming issues for this one like I said Kelly Thompson is killing it with this series definitely check out Black Widow if you haven't done it yet but for those reasons coming in at number five and up next in the list, we've got a community recommendation coming in at number four, and I'm so happy I was able to get a copy of this one. We've got DC's Robin, issue number one. This is cover A, and this issue was so much better than I thought it was going to be. The artwork, the pacing, the action, and even for someone who's not a big DC reader like myself, I felt like they did a pretty good job giving Robin a nice little background story just to, you know, catch me up on everything. So if you were on the fence with this one, you're kind of like me, you're on the pickier side with what you read from DC. 
DC. Definitely give this one a shot. So we had Batman and everybody. They're basically looking for Robin. And Robin's off just fighting people. He's trying to get the, into this fighting tournament. And from there, it was straight action. He's got this cocky little attitude. And I loved it all. I cannot wait for the next issue. And like I was saying, thank you so much for the recommendation. This was hands down one of the best DC books I've read in a very long time. So for those reasons, coming in at number four. Next up on the list, we have coming in at number three this week. This is Images, The Department of Truth, issue number eight. This is cover A, and it was also a brand new arc. So I kept my expectations a little bit lower for this one. This is probably the one I was still looking forward to most this week, but I knew it was going to be a brand new arc. They probably weren't going to jump straight into the action, but man, the story they told in this one was so good in my opinion. We got introduced right away to a brand new character. We don't really know a lot about him, but... Turns out they've been following Cole a little bit longer than he probably thinks they've been following him. And to me, I'm a big conspiracy nut. So right from there, they just went right into the issue and they were talking about all these different conspiracies. And I really liked it because those are ones that I've talked about with other people before and I've personally looked up online. So it's just cool to kind of see that being recognized in a comic book too. But then we got reintroduced into the character that they brought in in the very beginning. And he's just like this dude that fixes everything for the Department of Truth and I cannot wait to see where they go with this one. I think him and Cole are going to be getting into some crazy shit. So for those reasons, we have the Department of Truth issue number eight coming in at number three. And now we're down to the top two issues this week. We have coming in at number two. This is Marvel's Miles Morales Spider-Man issue number 27. This is the Skylight variant, and I love these covers. I know they've got quite a few with different characters out. I don't own any, though, so I'm really happy I was able to grab this one. Thank you, New World Comics up in Oklahoma City. And if you guys haven't been there before and you're in the area, go check them out. They've got a ton of awesome stuff. Now, as far as this issue goes, nobody is talking about it like they should be. Saladin Ahmed is killing it on Miles Morales right now. This is one of the best Marvel stories I've read in quite a while. I feel like I'm loving all of the arcs. The last one was all right in my opinion, but it was still really good. As far as the superhero stories go, this is probably my favorite one for Marvel right now, but the artwork's incredible, and this was just a big oversized issue to kick off the Clone Saga, and even though it was a big issue, it was such a nice, easy read. There was action, Peter Parker made an appearance, and right now they introduced a brand new character at the very end of this issue, and I can't wait to see where they go with this one so for those reasons we've got miles morales coming in at number two and this is it my top read of the week we have coming in at number one this week this is boom studios berserker issue number two this is cover a and honestly i really didn't know what to expect going into this issue i thought at least with the first one there's a lot of hype behind it but it's by keanu reeves so it's probably going to be very action-packed violent bloody you know keanu reeves stuff but with this one i thought they're probably going to go a little bit deeper into the story might not be as action-packed but man was i wrong this one picks up pretty much right where the last one left off they're still trying to tap into his memories and with this one we basically just get to see his whole past how he was born his upraising his training it was so good i loved it i love the artwork and i just love where they're going with this story right now so i highly suggest checking this one out i don't want to spoil it too much more than i already did so let's talk about this one a little bit more in the comment section but absolutely for those reasons easily my number one choice this week we have berserker issue number two so what'd you guys think of this week's new comic book day? Such a huge week for books. I picked up 17 different issues. One of them was an extra print and a few of them were back issues, but it was still part of this week's comic book haul. Let me know down low in the comment section what your top read of the week was. And thank you for watching my video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you don't want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down low and a little bell to get notified every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And I've got two more videos off to the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.